Welcome, welcome to Hangman Tarot. We're going to get started with our celebrity tarot card reading in just a minute. We are going to get into a reading with Jonathan Brand Brandis or Brandies. I think it's Brandis. Okay. So anyway, um, first go hit subscribe before we begin this reading. And then um, go ahead and click that bell. I am a little, it's a little hesitant on this reading um, because this is somebody who has a kind of a, a good following. And then they also have a cult following where that kind of freaks me out. Um, kind of like Britney Spears. Like, I mean, if you say anything wrong, like, or what they think it perceived to be wrong, like they will come for you. This is kind of the same thing. This person has a large um, variety of people or like following um, specifically one that can get a little nasty. So um, that's just because of how much they love their celebrity, of course. Um, let's get into this reading. I'm going to go over um, Jonathan's astrology, of course, and then I'm going to get into all of the other stuff, current reading, and then into our tarot card reading. So um, here we go. Okay, I can feel this. Okay. Okay, so he was born in Connecticut, Danbury, United States, April 13th, 1976 at 8 p.m. Um, that's the accuracy that they have. I can't find anything other. So if anybody knows what time he was born and it wasn't 8 p.m., then just let me know. Um, his, he was born with the name Jonathan Gregory Brandis. Brand is. Brand is. Oh, yeah. He was an American actor. He was a director. He was a screenwriter. And he began his career as a child model. He moved on to acting in commercials. And, and that was as Lucas Wollenzak, a teen prodigy on the NBC series Sequest DSV. The character was popular among the teenage female viewers. And he regularly appeared in teen magazines. I remember. <laughs> um, what did I? I used to watch him in magazines. Oh, like Teen Bop or Mbop or whatever that thing was called. I used to love those magazines. Ah, uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas too. Oh my lord! Stop it. Okay. Um, the character was popular. He was popular among teen female viewers, and he regularly appeared in teen magazines. And in November two thousand three, um, he did pass away of injuries sustained. Um trigger warning. And, um, for anybody who is sensitive to suicide, killing, um, death, um, you know, you name it, if you're sensitive, I'm not trying to be nasty or mean, or, you know, try to get like a shock value out of the situation. That's just where we are, um, on this reading and in this moment, um, this person did pass away from injuries that he sustained after hanging himself at the age of 27. And that was on November 12, 2003. So the reason that I did bring that up is because I didn't realize the amount of people that have passed away from hanging um, themselves and sustaining injury from that and some people that have actually survived. So again, I just want to give a trigger warning for um, talks of suicide and um, unaliving. And um, I want to apologize for anybody that I might have offended with even my conversations of my own brother's suicide who died of hanging. I don't mean to get a shock out of anybody. I don't mean to add shock value to this even or to the reading or to the hangman tarot. I mean, there is no shock value that is being given because of that. I just literally wanted to express my story. But um, my 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 heart reaches out to you if this affects you in that way. And I apologize. I'm not trying to affect anybody in any certain way as far as negative. Okay. I definitely want to affect you in a really good way. Um, I want, I want to make an impression, especially after somebody has passed from this. So I want his story to be heard. And that is just a part of his story is how he died and how he died is he committed suicide and he hung himself. And a lot of people don't like to say that. And a lot of people don't like to talk about that. But um, again, I understand if you're not in that place. And I understand if you don't like to talk about it. I do just as much as if you do. OK, um, so again, this is a trigger warning. I'm not going to give another one. So there it is. I'm not your mama. I'm not your mama. So get, go get your mama. I'm not your mama. <laughs> OK, let's get into this reading. I'm going to go over the current energy, his last most current or just kind of I just feel like there's kind of an lingering um of an energy just around even his name or discussing him or reading about him even felt a little off to me and not off in a bad way or a good way. It just like, again, once again, it just didn't feel like my other studies and I did a little bit of um, digging. So Yeah. 
Okay. So just from the cards, I am getting that there was um, almost like an embracing of non-silence or maybe somebody was being too silent or there was some sort of a presence um, just within itself. I just feel like there was something fully, fully trying to be embodied here. Um, almost like maybe there wasn't a way to be silent or maybe there was just a real resistance to silenting because without a little silence, without a little quiet, we stop changing and we stop growing because we're not learning. We're not hearing, we're not listening. We're not soaking it in. So uh, again, there's just a matter of this energy in these cards, but almost like he wasn't able to, a, you know, before, right before to be in a place like in energy wise, just to embrace kind of some quiet or embrace, you know, fully what is yours. And that is within yourself. Um, something almost like he wasn't able to stay in that or want to be in that. Um, I do think that there was definitely some sort of stairs. I don't know. Stairs are coming up. These aren't real good stairs though. These are fucked up stairs. I don't know what that means. Okay, I'm just I'm just going off my intuition here. So this is literally kind of very intuitive right now. And it's only because I'm feeling something and I feel it um, behind me. I know that's weird. I know that sounds crazy, but that's just what it is. Okay, so just kind of the energy of wanting to invoke some sort of power, um, some sort of fear that was hidden, but didn't want to be hidden, if that makes sense. I feel like there was definitely... some harmony in this though. There was an underlining change coming. There was some sort of change coming and it was coming with or without. I mean, it was just coming. I mean, this is something that is kind of a rarity, this uh, committing suicide, even within this, his birth chart. It just indicated that it's a rarity when somebody in his position in the worst case scenario, birth charts of, of his to actually commit suicide. So I found that very, very strange. I, I haven't read that yet. So it was just a thing. Yeah, there was definitely an undenying situation, something that you could not deny. There was definitely some sort of a change. And it was like this change or, you know, denying what this change might have been would have really, you know, added to what was coming because what was coming really was lurking beneath the surface of things. So it's just almost like, there was a lot of fear hidden and a lot of fear that wasn't being able to come out. Um, so that, you know, even, even in talking, it's just like, there wasn't like a lot of importance. Um, but if there was more silence or he was more empowered or more, more, there was more of a push to go inside of himself, more engagement within himself. I just feel like there was some sort of a, something very hidden there. Let's find out. I'm going to read the tarot because now I'm in, now I'm going, I'm going in, I'm going in people. Here we are. Here we go. Okay. So basically I'm just going to get the most, um, occurring specific, um, situation, any obstacle experience, um, anything that we need to know as far as his death right before I would like to know the biggest situation at that moment or obstacle that maybe he was overcoming or trying to overcome or couldn't overcome. Obviously, uh, um, any of those would be nice. So, but let's get a little bit about him first. I want to know about him. <clears throat> it got really hot in my house. Maybe because I have a hoodie on. Okay, so a little bit about him through tarot is he was a very loving person. Um, the expression of it may have come off a little more intense than normal people or most people. Um, stability within the mind um, is kind of questionable here. I feel like he was extremely talkative. And then as far as like talking, I feel like he was always kind of like high in spirits or that's how he engaged with other people. So he was always coming at people with something very enthusiastic. He was always coming at people with this love and this kindness and purity and almost just coming from a place of like a, a lover without being a lover, if that makes sense. I mean, only like our lover can make us feel really amazing. So to have like a friend coming at you and making you feel so loved that it feels like a lover, like is amazing that 
that he had that about. But he also had this intensity that created quite a moodiness. I don't know if he really liked water or not. I don't know if he did. I don't, maybe he didn't eat fish either. I'm just taking a stab at that. I really feel like maybe he didn't. Um, there was definitely some sort of stability in his life, but it seems more like an, he wanted, you know, maybe to talk or to be in love or, you know, to be in a relationship or to complete something. It was just like this over intense folks focus or fixation even on, on the financials or on the business. Um, so he, he had something that he really, that was something he really held closely to him. Um, especially with like anything that would, uh, with reliability or access, you know, to money or keeping safe in the material world. That's something he wanted to keep near him. But it was almost like he was just kind of over something here, or maybe he was just over-focused on it. Hmm. I feel like that something was coming to an end. Maybe it was that instability he was feeling within his job. There was definitely some sort of a business instability that could have been coming to an end though. I feel like that might've helped with him feeling that, that, that unsafe feeling. There was an unsafe feeling again, it was kind of surrounding by the coins or business. So I feel like there is some sort of an ending or a completion, but that's not where this went but this would have come to an ending. I don't, did he have a dog? I don't know if he had a dog or not. That's coming up. A dog, like a lab? No, golden retriever, probably golden retriever. I don't know. Though. It was just him. He had two parents. It was just him. Might have been cousins on the outside. Might have been cousins on the outside. Or it could have even been just like people that were very, very close that felt like siblings. Or maybe they were step-siblings or half-siblings that came. But there's three of them. All right, let's get into the biggest obstacle or the biggest experience that he was having right before. Let's talk about what the universe needs you to know about it and what we need to know about it just in general. Some sort of a situation or experience he was kind of over, kind of over it. A relationship. There was a relationship, but this could have been love or family. This definitely was something where somebody was really holding his heart. This person still holds his heart. This, uh, this person still has his heart. This person could have been an air sign, could have been an earth sign or water, female. It could have been male too, quite honestly. I think the male though, let me think on that for a second. Okay, so whatever situation he was over with this relationship, he was kind of over something on the situation. It could have been the reliability of it. It could have been just like the down to earthness or just kind of like getting back into the nitty gritty or changing and growing. But like there was something kind of like stopping it or stalling it. And I don't know what that might have been. It could have been even his business. It could have been the fact that he didn't know if he could provide for this person. Maybe I don't know. It's just kind of like showing lacking funds even. So I just feel like no matter what, it was just like the sensitivity from this relationship and the intensity that was brought upon with emotion because of this, you know, new beginning or a recycle of a relationship. It could have been any of those things, but I do feel like this was a love relationship. So some sort of a love relationship. And, and again, this person still expresses love and devotion to him. And this person still is holding his heart. The likely outcome is, of course, communication and some sort of change, obviously. Um, there was a change that had to, you know, come in into play here. But I do feel like that this person probably recognizes um, Jonathan through birds or maybe even a bat. I know a bat sounds crazy, but some people, I mean, wouldn't say that it's too crazy, I guess. Um, or just nature or being outside even probably brings them closer. 
um, mountains, mountains also. Gosh, even a firefly probably. Beautiful. And when they think of him, they're thinking of him almost like just sitting kind of like outside and there's wind going through his hair by the mountains outside. It was, I mean, these birds, though, keep coming into play. And materialistically, he was not. He was not into all the, he could have cared less. Like that was just not his focus. And that's being indicated here also. Okay. Okay. So energy around that relationship was definitely something of a adventure and it was something that he had experienced in. It could have been a play again relationship or a recycled relationship. So whoever that person was that has his heart still, this is being indicated right now about your relationship. It's just the energy was there. The spiritual connection was there. It was like always a constant wanting to build. And again, there was something kind of stunting it, but I feel like no matter how this played out, he was always coming through with communication and trying to relate to the other person. So he definitely was trying to take charge in the relationship. He was trying to, you know, keep it, keep it just as assured as he was trying to make his own self. So he was trying to, you know, lead or, you know, help in anything, any way that he could keep the lights on and the birds are coming up once again. So there's birds again, definitely being indicated here, but the balance was something that might have been kind of um, a tipping point. So what happened? Oh, this is not why though. Let's move forward. I wanna move forward. Okay. upside down. Yeah. Okay. Wheel is in reverse. We have our nine of cups. That's also in reverse. So right before, or maybe within the, his passing there, uh, these two cards are coming upside down, um, hanging upside down. Literally. That's what they look like. They don't normally look like that, but, um, so there was almost, you know, like some sort of fulfillment, obviously here. It's in resistance because, um, or it's in it, reverse, I feel as if, again, because of the passing. So there's been a lot of reverse cards. So I haven't been really paying much attention to them until just now, because these two are right next to each other. But the last part of this reading, like th with the person, those were upright. So that was, that was wonderful. I think that was really um, a loving connection, whatever that was. Sparkly. It had its, it always had its kind of spark there. It's always original. Um, spark is always there. And it's still probably there for that other person. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Okay. So the, it's like the luck kind of, you know, kind of ran out, if you will. I do feel like whatever this might be, I feel like it's, a, it's somebody who was not aware, somebody who was not aware. And the emotional state, the mental state here was definitely not aware. Um, so the intensity of the emotions kind of took over and um, I don't even know if he was probably aware of what, like, I sometimes think that the soul has released or like is somehow we aren't conscious, especially like right before um, our passing, if we commit suicide. So sometimes um, if I'm relaying the message, it's going to sound different than another reader once again, because we all kind of like come from different places and talk about things in a completely different way because that's how we see them. So again, I don't mean any disrespect when I'm doing these types of readings. This is why this makes me so nervous, but I just feel like the feelings here were very cold around um, the major situation. And that was just feeling not lucky, just feeling like, you know, kind of like the wheel had stopped turning type of thing. So things stopped moving. There was no more momentum. And that was just the kind of the energy, the vibe. I definitely feel like there is some sort of, again, non-awareness and moodiness and it's just cold and it's cut off. And this is just completely like in a very uncaring state. Um, and this could have been right before, but there was a rejection, a feeling of rejection was the likely outcome.
Okay, the likely outcome for feeling that in that in that space, just feeling like the luck had run out and just feeling that mole, that moody, cold, again, just very unconscious, just not very aware. And even like, not very great to be around even right before. I just feel like there was a codependency, something very uncaring, some sort of a connection that kind of put him in this space. I don't think it's that relationship, but it could have been any type of relationship. Um, I do feel like the likely outcome of that was definitely some sort of an experience kind of moving into um, finally coming back into the earth or into the ground. So I definitely feel like his experience is more than reliable at this point. So his experience is definitely relating to his life when it comes to um, coming back into the earth, coming back into the, you know, back into where he came from, just, you know, this passing, coming back into this experience um, physically and then leading into that light. So leading in the, the tradition of this was off completely of his passing. The tradition of it was completely off. So I don't think there was anything traditional about it. I don't think that, I don't think he meant for it to be that way. I, I mean, if he could have controlled it, if that makes sense, because it's just like, there's light and there's a, a smiling here. There is. And that's the way that he would have, if you, if he could have handled it in any other way, that's the way it would have been. It would have been in some sort of laughter and some sort of light. And again, those stairs keep coming into play. So the stairs are back into this reading also just that light though, that surrounds him is like nobody else's I've seen. Like the focus, the focus was literally like coming out of this physical experience. And again, if he could have had it any other way, he would have done it in a different way. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Let's move forward. Now, what do we have now? What does he have? There is a message, um, seven of cups, queen of cups so far. Okay, so there is a message as far as like, something that is definitely a message of love or a message of something of kindness, serene, empathetic, something compassionate, something looking over, kind of like taking his time assessing um, which one do I want to send type thing. And then here it comes. And it is definitely some sort of a message about love or lover or romantic, or it could even be just to somebody who's a water sign, definitely water sign. We're going to find out what he would leave the message because we got to find out now. I wasn't going to go this deep into it, but damn. I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. So we might want to get into it. Whew, it is hot in my house. I turned my AC off in Wyoming. It is however degrees, I don't even know, but it's just the weirdest weather. And I'm freezing outside, and then it was freezing, and now I'm hot as shit. Okay. Okay. So this is his message to this Queen of Cups. Um, this is definitely a message, and again, it was something he assessed before he sent this or allowed this message to, to come through because there was something of a picking. So he could have picked from something to say or pick to give to who. And this is something that is coming to a queen of cups. Again, it can align in a different way, such as a romantic partner or somebody he loved very, very much. Um, I feel like red hair, red hair, olive skin, darker skin. This person's beautiful. highly connected to this person there. Okay. So moving into this message is just that this, this, this was not going to, he, he's just indicating there's no way to win here. Um, saying he's sorry, there's an apology here too. So just like asking for that forgiveness, but it just doesn't work the fight. It says, take your time. At this point, there's just no delay. There's no delay anymore, but there would have been no balance even in changing his thinking or changing the thinking or the, you know, the consciousness. There just, 
it was no winning at this point. And he is very, very um, clear on this would have, the fight would have been way bigger than what he was wanting as like a gift from it or a reward. Or he didn't think um, even like, cause I, it's just like this stability in the mind is very off here. And I really wasn't vibing that on him. And keep taking your time because you're still raw. So the conflict here, the instability here was in the mind, very much so. And it probably was here all the time. I'm also seeing eye problems. Definitely could have been some sort of an eye problem here or just the mere fact that this person could not relax. I don't know if there was some heart stuff. I don't know if that came up at all. Heart stuff, stroke, maybe high blood pressure, not quite sure, but this is definitely being indicated also. Last couple cards here. High Priestess, Eight of Wands up, Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Um, okay. There was a hidden something or other going on. Okay. So there was definitely hidden feelings here. And he actually had a fear of what he was feeling. This will align with his friends and his family and the people that know him. But I mean, I feel like there definitely was something here and it would have really fucking like played with the future. It really would have played with his future, if that makes sense. So just like even in his business. And he was like very, very productive at what he did. And the progress was always there. But this is what consumed him was whatever was going on on the inside. He couldn't help and he couldn't hide it anymore. At this point, um, I do feel like there was a fear here also, again, of how he felt and a fear of kind of how it would toy around with his business or what he was doing. And he was a perfectionist, so he didn't want to show it in any other way type of thing for me. Um, I do think when he's looking back on the situation, he can definitely he always knew. OK, he always knew. He always knew. He definitely wanted to explore it too, or like look at it or, you know, reflect on it or assess it again, just kind of always wanting to check things out before he would put the product out. Really. I mean, he was a perfectionist. He wasn't going to be like, Oh, here's my feelings and throw them out there. He was going to take some time on this. But again, this is just something he always knew and he wanted to think about it completely before he acted on it. And this could have had to do with something, um, some action oriented for, you know, an adventure even, or just his purpose or spiritual or, or maybe even passion. Um, so passionate wise, it could have been too. It would have been an adventure, that's for sure. So likely outcome of that was just, he was just too afraid. The effort, there was no way, but he had no like real passion to put in the effort. So like he knew, he, it's really weird because he would come off in a certain way to people that would make them feel good. But then it was just so very hard for him to do self-assure himself. Okay. So that is definitely being brought up quite often throughout this reading. And I just feel like to fall in love was a very slow process for him. And that is being brought up. So um, he was afraid to always kind of take a risk or he was afraid to, you know, give back the love that he was getting from people. He was actually not very good at reciprocating that in a deep, deep way. Um, he was able to do that surfacely. He was able to, Hey, how are you? Like, are you great? How are you doing? And he was real shiny and happy and fucking sparkly. And he made all these people feel all sparkly, but it's like the moment that it got real fucking thick and real deep. It's just like these feelings completely took over these thoughts, the overthinking, you know, the stress of things it's definitely took over. And he does has, he has lots of impulsion. He did lots of risky things, even when he didn't really have to, there was those moments where he'd be like, I'll take a risk if I have to. Um, he wasn't afraid to do that. So, um, but taking a risk in the love situation would have been very scary. Okay. It would have been very, very scary. And it, he easily got upset too. I don't know if that had anything to do with, um, the relationship stuff also. He definitely was very, very easy to, you know, upset. And it was like overly direct. So um, mouthy, yeah, of course. Um, maybe sometimes he would say the truth, but it wouldn't be with kindness. Do that, I get it. I totally can feel that. <laughs> okay, um, either way, this is definitely, um, it was a good reading. I was very scared to do the reading again. So I'm sorry if my nerves kind of got a little bit at me during the reading. I was very nervous to do it again. He has a very like thick following and I just didn't want, 
sometimes um, I'm a perfectionist also, and it makes me procrastinate. I literally been sitting on this reading for like a week. So um, here you go. This is the Jonathan <laughs> brand is reading and um, my condolences, my love, my positive thoughts and feelings, of course, go out to you. And I, I, I think that's so cheesy when we say that, cause it's like, what is that really fucking doing for anybody? Like, I know exactly how that feels. It's just, just like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Like, you don't know how the fuck I feel, <laughs> but again, I can sympathize. I can understand, but I cannot understand fully how you feel. No, it's, it's however that loss is for you all. Um, I do want to say though, uh, continue to rest in peace and keep flying high. I'm going to get out of here. I got to get into another reading. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I'm going to get to the business of things, share and like this video, please, if you would. Um, also go ahead and check out the playlist on Hangman Tarot for more celebrity readings. If you want to make a request, please go ahead and check it out in my social media and get a hold of me there, or you can get a hold of me in my comments over on the right side. Other than that, please enjoy the rest of this very gloomy, cloudy, and beautiful, blessed day. See you later.